I'm Marty Alvarez. And I'm Reginald Atatula. And this is UTA Spotlight. In this episode, we'll look at a legal battle that could possibly have huge implications for Texas immigrants, show how UTA is honoring its past, and talk to a military veteran who's putting the world in focus. So grab your bags and follow us around campus. A controversial order signed into law by President Obama is being fought in the Supreme Court. And depending on the result, it could have a huge impact on the Texas immigrant population. Texas versus the United States is a case regarding the constitutionality of deferred action for parents of Americans and the expansion of DACA. DAPA is uh, basically what DACA is, but for parents, and uh, also another part of that is being uh, disputed is DACA Plus, which is DACA, but ex with uh, requirements a little bit longer for ages, and it's a little bit, uh, more people would benefit from DACA Plus. Essentially, this law would allow nearly 5 million immigrants to step out of the shadows, and it'll give them the opportunity to work legally and obtain a driver's license without the fear of being deported. While it's not a form of permanent citizenship, it would be a temporary solution for the immigration problem the nation faces. In February of last year, a Texas federal judge blocked the Obama administration executive order on immigration after a lawsuit was filed by Texas along with 25 other states. What the um, states are arguing, the Republicans in the Congress and the states are arguing, is that they have standing because they're stuck with the cost of the implementation. And this too is an age old fight where the federal government will either pass a law or issue an executive order and then the states are left holding the, the, the bag in terms of the money. In the legal brief to the Supreme Court, Texas argues that they will lose millions of dollars in issuing driver's licenses to the 500,000 eligible immigrants. Besides the costs, the states are also arguing that the president ignored federal procedure and is overstepping his power in issuing this executive order. The Democrats were critical of the same thing with George W. Bush um, and his use of executive orders. And uh, this is really a power of the president that is not codified in the Constitution. It's a power that's been given to the president through Congress. Earlier this year, an amicus curiae, or a Friends of the Court brief, was filed by the District of Columbia and 12 other states in support of Obama's executive action. Myra Cordova, UTA News. The Supreme Court is currently split. Should they not come to an agreement by the end of the summer, the case will be sent to a lower court. Books are often a look into the past. The Central Library is currently offering an exhibit that allows you to take a deep dive into the history of UTA. Inside the glass walls of the Central Library's special collection space, a vast array of artifacts and photos detail the history behind one of Texas's oldest institutions. From humble beginnings as a military academy to now housing almost 50,000 students as a Tier 1 research university, UT Arlington's history is as rich and diverse as the community surrounding it. The lineage can be traced back over three centuries, from trying to fill in the gaps left by public education, to training future military leaders, to even being aligned with Texas A&M for a time. The exhibit shows a full color picture of the college's past. I was very impressed. It was a lot more detailed than I was anticipating. There were a lot of very descriptive pieces describing what happened over the course of years that I didn't even know the school existed. So getting to see the history that went as far back as 1895 was really informative and then getting to see some of the stuff that they're looking to be doing in the future with their 2020 mission statement. Overall, just very comprehensive and detailed and thorough. As far as collecting all these windows into the past, exhibit curators did not have to look far when they wanted to stock their display cases. Everything you see in the exhibit, whether it's um, photographs, artifacts, um, whatever types of records are in the exhibit, all of these materials are housed in special collections. The past blast can even aid in pressing the pause button on the constant attention given to the events of the here and now. Even though I'm not big on history, being able to see some of the things that they have done over the years was just very informative and very enlightening because a lot of times we only think about the current things that are going on in the school and being able to see some of the things they did in the past was really interesting. Samuel Hale, UTA News. For more information on this or future exhibits, select Special Collections on the UTA Library website. A UTA student and former veteran 
had the opportunity to document a story on a group of soldiers currently fighting in Iraq. Thomas Hose had the opportunity to sit on a one-on-one -on -one interview with Daniel Card. I know recently, uh, during this past spring break, that you went to, went to Iraq for about 10 days. Um, can you tell me a little bit about why you decided to do that in the first place? And I thought, you know what, why don't I do something beneficial to my career, something that can help people and something that can help me, you know, what I want to pursue in life which is, you know, I want to be a war and a conflict photojournalist. So um, I started looking up some areas of conflict that I could easily fly into because it had to be accessible. I couldn't get into one of them that would, I'd fly to another country then have to be smuggled in due to time. And then I started looking at um, fixers because that's a very important thing. If a fixer is someone in a foreign country who, if you're a journalist and you're going there, you hire them because they know the people, they speak the language, they translate and drive and they help you um, make your story happen. What was it like while you were there? Very surreal. There was, I mean, it, it was not anything like I had expected. Uh, there, you know, of course there's the front line going on. It is an active war zone. Uh, you're seeing refugee camps bigger than, huge. Seeing all these people that are internally displaced people and refugees. Um, we went to an abandoned village called Telescuf in Daesh. They came over and they occupied the town and all of them except for three citizens fled. And uh, they're, they're Christians and eventually the Peshmerga uh, came back to the town. And so just seeing all these things like that, I mean, it's very, it's more than what you see on the news, it's real. Being a soldier beforehand and like going and seeing it as like what's going on as a journalist, what was your perception like, or was it different compared to what you kind of experienced when you were in the army? I, I think maybe being a veteran kind of helped me accept the fact when the mortars started coming in that, you know, I could easily be killed and there's nothing I can do to stop it. So there's no reason to f let the fear of it stop me from doing what I'm here to do. Can you tell me about some of the photos that you took? Well, I happened to be there during Nuros. Nuros, it's uh, the Kurdish traditional New Year. So I, I documented some photos of them celebrating the New Year, and they celebrate by lighting fires. And so the whole countryside that I was at was you know lit up with all these random fires all over from celebrating the New Year. So I got some photos of that. I've got photos of, um, of course, at the front line. I got a photo of one of the... Um, the suicide bombing, the jet, one of the guys that Peshmerga fighters who ended up getting hurt. Um, I got photos of some of the generals and having meetings. Of course, I got a photograph of mortars going out, tracers flying around. Um, then I, we went to a village and I photographed uh, some Yazidis who are a, uh, they're a religious group there that Daesh hates more than pretty much anything else over there right now. Photographed a bunch of kids because I was American, so Ameriki, come here. And so it kind of made it hard to document, like candidly, because suddenly I was like, you know, being flooded with all these little kids. So I had to photograph them, and I was trying to figure out how can I do my job when I'm being surrounded and I'm being turned into like a portrait photographer. What do I do? How did the trip uh, to Iraq affect you personally? There's so much more going on that we're not seeing here. There's a lot more going on. Um, I wish people would really start paying attention to what's going on and start realizing, you know, there's a lot. And Peshmerga soldiers, they're not fighting Daesh just for them. I mean, that, that is a fight they're doing on behalf of the world. How do you feel now that you're back? It's taking a little bit of getting used to to be back here. <laughs> it's been a, you know, it's been an adventure trying to get back into the swing of things back here. If you'd like to see more on this story, check out our website on utanews.com. Man, those are some great photos, Mari. They really were, Reggie. Well, that's all we have for this edition of UTA Spotlight. On behalf of our producer, James Belknap. And our videographer, Sam Hale and Jeffrey Burtis. I'm Mari Alvarez. And I'm Reginald Atatula. We'll see you next time on campus.